اهلا بكل الذين ينضموا للاستماع الى راديو بلدي اول راديو عربي امريكي ويعنى بقضايا العرب في المهجر. برامجنا في راديو بلدي كل يوم جمعه من الثامنه وحتى التاسعه صباحا مع ليلى الحسيني في بث حي ومباشر عبر دبليو ان بي كي راديو 690 اي ام صباح الخير بلدي صباح الخير لكل مستمعينا. Welcome to Radio Baladi, the first Arab, Middle Eastern and American simulcast radio show. Radio Baladi is broadcast every Friday morning on WNCK 690 AM from 8 until 9 Eastern Time on Good Morning Michigan with Layla Al Husseini. Our call in number 248-557-3300. And now, stay tuned for the best radio talk show on Arab and American issues with your host, Layla Al Husseini. <laughs> Good Morning Michigan is brought to you by Dreamy Children's Centers. It's never too early to get your child on the right track. From their first words to first grade, Dreamy Children's Center in Troy works closely with parents to provide an experience that goes beyond early education. The highly qualified and experienced staff use a variety of programs that can help nurture important personality traits like responsibility, independence, problem solving, motivation, and respect. They also have educational programs ranging from preschooling for infants, toddlers, transitional toddlers, and pre-K to Montessori-approved programs and bilingual curriculums for young children. They're open from 6 a.m. to 6.30 p.m., can provide breakfast, lunch, and dinner with snacks in between, and can also arrange for after-school pickups. Dreamy Children's Center in Troy is located at 37373 DeQuinder, just above 16 Mile Road, and can be found on Facebook at Dreamy Children's Center. Ask about the free preschool program. Call today, 248-680-9170, 248-680-9170. Good morning and welcome to Radio Baladi. This is Khalil Hashem with you again, and we want to thank you for tuning in this morning. You are the best of audience. Radio Bellady is the best ethnic radio station in North America. Today is Friday, uh, February 27th. The month is almost gone. There is one more day left. Where did it go? We want to thank you for being with us. And uh, the weather, it's cold today. It's about, uh, it was in the minus in this morning, and it's going to climb up to the 19, if we're lucky. Although it is sunny outside, and it's going to be sunnier tomorrow. However, the rest of the week looks could be climbing above 32, which is above freezing. We are looking forward to that, and, and we really need the break from the cold weather. Um, we have an exciting show for you today. Today we're going to be talking to Dr. Suwan. She's going to be talking to us about uh, whiplash and the, the terrible pain it caused uh, and, and, and management of that pain. We're going to be talking to... Also, uh, Dreamy to Rama Al Husseini from uh, Dreamy Schools, Dreamy Children, and uh, she's going to be talking to us about a new center that they have. In the uh, before we go to the news, we're just going to listen to a quick, quick uh, uh, piece uh, from music from Fairuz to set the mood, and then we're going to be right back with you. <laughs> أشوفك وين يا مهاجر قل لي غايبة لك صاير قل لي غايبة لك صاير أشوفك وين يا مهاجر أفراقك مو سهل عندي ولا هي أزمة وتعدي تعالوا طيب الخاطر أشوفك وين يا مهاجر أشوفك وين يا مهاجر Welcome back. Uh, you know, this was lost in translation, actually. This was not Fairuz, but Ashufa Kweni Amhajar. Anyway, just wanted in the news uh, this morning, or, or this week rather, uh, just wanted to remind you that last week was the Oscar. And just was one um, 
observation about the Oscars, it was it was really great to see the the uh, mention and the tribute to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that night and the movie Selma. And I hope that uh, the spirit of Dr. Martin Luther King will foster more tolerance to include not only people of all colors but also people of all faith and ethnicities. So let's hope that carries on. Um, also, I want to remind you that you can uh, join the conversation here. If you have any questions or if you have a comment, the number here is 248-557-3300. We look forward to your calls, whether it is in Arabic or in English. We're here to really work with you and, uh, and chat with you. We'll be more than happy to hear from you. Governor Snyder established Middle Eastern Af American Affairs Commission. This is a, a commission that would help to advise the state and others in regard to American Arab American uh, issues. Beaumont building is building a proton treatment center. This is you know proton treatment is one of the most effective treatment for cancer. And it's an exciting program and hopefully will provide some treatment for those who really need it. This is, a, this is really good news in the community. If you still need health care insurance coverage and you didn't get a chance to really get one, get, try to connect with the state. If you qualify, they still may be you know, working with you. Um, we have heard that the assault at the local supermarket in Dearborn, it was ruled not a hate crime. And the issue will be referred to the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office for review. We'll see how that would come out. As you will know, spring is around the corner, and most municipalities either will trim trees or will replace trees that are uh, in the um, right-of-way that's in the easement in front of your house. Get with your call, your municipality. I did use that a couple of years ago. Um, we called the city of Dearborn, and they came in, and they planted a tree right in front of our house, and, and it's, it's, really, it's really nice. It's growing. It was incidentally that tree when they planted it. It was the same year when my son was born. So every time we we'll look at it, we say that tree, we know how old it is because we know how old our son is. Um, there is a great program, and just wanted to spread out the news. If you have a refrigerator that is was manufactured before 2000, the year 2000, which is an old fridge, and you're low income, you could qualify for a fridge replacement for free. That's through DTE Electric Services. So it's, um, uh, the information is on our website, which is yamichigan.com, and you can go there and, and log into the website or, so, or call the number to get more information on how you can do that. Again, if you have a, an old fridge that is older than 2000, the year 2000, and you're low income, you could qualify for this uh, replacement uh, of fridge. The city of Dearborn and several municipalities are passing laws to restrict hookah lounges. What do you think of that? Do, do, can, can, should a city restrict these hookah, hookah lounges? And hookah lounges, these are lounges where you can go and order a hookah and have some food. And I think the issue is having food and, and hookahs at the same time. And I think that's a state law. But these municipalities are going a little bit further, trying to say that you, we want to restrict how many we can have in here. Not sure why they want to do that, and 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 uh, you know, but uh, I think only 15 can be allowed in the city of Dearborn. Other municipalities have done similar, have adopted similar ordinances. And what do you think of that? Does, is that a good idea for a city or a municipality to restrict what kind of businesses they have, and specifically hookah lounges? Because hookah lounges basically are Middle Eastern. Uh, establishments and they're always busy I don't I don't smoke myself I used to a long time ago and when I did I enjoyed it tremendously it's uh, you know what's what's your favorite uh, hookah what uh, flavor do you like and and I think hookahs are originally uh, were Turkish I believe and uh, then it spread throughout the Middle East and there's different flavors and and uh, it, it, so they want to restrict that. Is 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 that a good idea? And uh, um, we may have a caller, and uh, we wanted to see what's on your mind. 
And uh, please give us a call. The number here is 248-557-3300. One of my my favorite topics is food, because food basically unites people. Uh, I was talking to my wife the other day, and I said, you know, this is... uh, we, we we grew up uh, cooking our own food. And the other day we had some company over, and 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 uh, what I wanted, what I made for them was uh, fresh bread. And let me tell you, there is nothing better than baking fresh bread when you have visitors or when you're getting up in the morning, and uh, it's just uh, just amazing. And it's not difficult to make. Uh, fresh bread. Uh, all I did is uh, combined one third wheat flour and two third uh, 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 bread flour, a little bit of yeast and a little bit of uh, dash of milk, salt and dash of sugar. Combine them together. My favorite is what's called the flat bread, which is if you're from the old country like me, called mashatih. My grandmother used to make. They're delicious. You add a little bit of aniseed to that. And uh, and uh, sesame seed as well. You mix them together. You flatten them with a little bit of oil. The trick here is to heat up the oven to about 500 degrees. And it needs to be really hot. And then you just put them in there, and five minutes later you have fresh bread. I recall my grandmother used to make that. Although my grandmother used to have uh, uh, an outdoor beehive oven. It's called tabun. And, and in that tabun it was... a uh, built out of clay and uh it's really nice and when we used to when the ambers are really good size and we used to she 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 used to flatten the bread and put them there there are different kinds of tabun and tanur and and all of these uh uh u- utilities or utensils if i can sort of, if i can call them that um or ovens rather if i can call them ovens to to make that flat bread and and uh, it, it can keep for about a week outside the fridge or inside the fridge i freeze them and every time i need them i just put them back in the oven and they come out really great uh, uh flatbread is one of the the one of my favorite we we make all kind of food and the other day i had a discussion with uh, someone in regard to falafel and he said that falafel really actually they're not egyptian they're palestinian are they palestinian or egyptian i don't know what do you think the number here is Two four eight five five seven three three zero zero. Are falafel Egyptian or Palestinian? Wh- whoever came up with the idea, let me tell you, falafel tastes good. They're filling, they're not expensive, and they're good for you. So uh, what we're going to do shortly is we're going to take a, a, a commercial break in about, is it one, like two minutes? And then we have a caller, and we're going to take the caller after the break, but at the same time, we're going to continue talking about, you know, the subject of your choice, whether... Uh, uh, the, the, other, the other controversy, it's not really controversy, uh, the, the other dish that brings a lot of uh, uh, discussion is baklava. Uh, you know, I get into these discussions with some people telling me baklava is Greek, and I say, well, it's, I thought it was Middle Eastern. So is it really Greek or Middle Eastern? Although they're different because I think Greeks use uh, honey with it and it's a little bit bigger and heavier and Middle Eastern baklava is smaller. Again, uh, we were just talking in the studio here earlier. I don't care who came up with the idea. They taste good. Holidays are not the same without a little piece of baklava. Uh, For whatever it is worth, baklava is what's called in Arabic baklava, which comes from bakala and bakala is grocery. And, uh, to, you know, somebody told me a long time ago that, uh, that, you know, that means it's small and sweet. And, and if the name is Arabic, I wonder, you know, why do we call it a Greek? So, uh, uh, is it, is it Greek or is it, uh, Middle Eastern? So, if, if you know the origin of baklava, give us a call. Again, the number here is 248-557-3300. So we have two uh, issues to discuss, and they're very important issues. Is falafel Palestinian, or is it Egyptian? And is baklava Middle Eastern, or is it Greek? Stay tuned. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Thank you. Jumana K. Ruse. You've seen her images on giant billboards across the metro. Jumana K. Ruse. You've seen her images on buses across the city. Now get to know Jumana K. Ruse. Most 
people who sit in my office across from my desk are hurting on so, so many levels. One thing people do not know about medical malpractice is that the statute of limitation, meaning the time that you have to bring suit against a doctor, a hospital, is two years. In medical malpractice, that's a very, very short period of time. Not every lawyer is an advocate, but every lawyer should be an advocate. Let Jumana Kairos protect your rights. Call the law offices of Jumana Kairos at 1-866-YOUR-RIGHTS, extension 100, or visit yourrights.com. Ziad Brand, quality products from our family to yours. Ziad Brothers Importing offers the finest quality products, including brands like Sultan, Kraft, Nestle, Hook, Rico Picon, Donna, and many more. Ask your retailer to carry these fine products because you deserve the very best. For more information, visit our website at www.ziad.com. That's www.ziad.com. Ziad, quality products from our family to yours. Thank you and, and, and welcome back uh, to Radio Belladi, one of the best uh, or the best uh, radio station, ethnic radio station in North America. The number here is 248-557-3300. Um, just wanted to mention to you that if your taxes uh, are simple and you need help, several places are providing free assistance, including access. And also, uh, some of the municipalities are providing uh, free tax help for seniors and low income. Uh, you know, call your municipality and call Access, and they'll be more than happy to help you. I also wanted to remind you that fill up your car with gasoline today because the prices are going up and they're going up fast. Uh, you know, I still don't understand why they came down and why they go up, but somebody's making a lot of money out of that. Anyway, the most important thing is. You know, you make sure you don't pay too much money for gasoline. Um, we were, before we went on break, we were discussing two important topics: falafel and baklava. Hal anu al falafel falastani am masri, wa the other issue is al baklawa. Hal hi yunani am 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 Arabi min al Middle East. The number here is two four eight five five seven three three zero zero. Before we went on break, we had uh, Jerry on the line. Uh, good morning, Jerry. Good morning, Khalil, and happy Friday. Same to you. Same to and you, my Khalil, friend. How are you? you? Thank you, Khalil. Thank you for taking my call. Absolutely. You, you bright uh, the day uh, the sunshine came in when I heard your voice. Thank you. Uh, because without uh, 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 an Arabic uh, radio program, we are lost. Absolutely, absolutely. Believe me. You know, I, I really want to take this opportunity to thank Layla, Layla Al Husni for, uh, you know, for founding Al Husseini. Yeah, Husseini for founding this program and for her hard work and diligence to keep this program, you know, on the air. It's a lot of work, and God bless her. And and we really need to do whatever we can to support her and make sure that this uh, program stays stays Absolutely, on there. Absolutely, Mr. Khalil Hashem, I I I join you with this uh, um, uh, radio show, even if it is from eight till nine. There's a lot of effort. There is a lot of stress. Absolutely, it's not like just she come in and uh, uh, speak a few words. No. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of work. It takes a lot of stress sometimes. Uh, and, and, and people, uh, I, I love all the listeners, but some people, they think it is only uh, being in the air. It is as easy as uh, one, two, three. No, it is not. Uh, and you know, I, also, I also want to remind our listeners is that we are on in the afternoon. We are also on 24-hour a day online, and, and we're always available you know, at Radio Ballad. I listen to you always, uh, Khalil yeah. Thank you. and Layla at Radio yeah. Ballad through uh, 1702 Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. What, what's on your mind, uh, Khalil, Jerry? you make me hungry, Habibi. You <laughs> mentioned the bread. <laughs> yes. The fresh bread. Remind me about my mother. God bless her soul. I know, I, know I know. Your mom, she's alive. Uh, oh, 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 uh, your mom, uh, she m used to make this. Bil-Iraqi Khubz Rgag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rak, yeah. It's the same thing. Ustaz Khalil, she put this seed, Habbat al-Soda. Soda, yeah. Habbat al-Baraki. 
نعم وحبه الخير نعم, نعم. وكانت اوت دور تنور تنور ماي مذر شيكو خليل ان شي ماي جاد بلس ذيم خليل وات ابوت اف وي جيت اي كول ماي مام تو سند اس كابل اوف ام وان فور مي وان فور يو وان فور ليلى ذاتس وندرفل مان ذاتس وندرفل يو نو ذا ديفرنس بتوين تنور اند طابون از تنور از ا سيلندر you know in the ground and then you lace the bread on it and the taboon is more like a, a concave oven and it just you put the bread inside it and what a grandmother used to do is you know she used to use a taboon which is made out of clay and they, let me tell you that bread was unbelievable and you know you know they used to grind their own wheat and it's all fresh and healthy and good yes. for you the Ms. smell is unbelievable oh, in smell. the house. wonderful mr khalil yeah. beside this my mother like we say tanur from the clay and do it outside there was another thing my mother she used to use saj saj was like a metal Saj is different. Saj is the yeah. bread on top of it, on right? On top of it, yeah. That's 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 for for maru bread, which is oh, that's right. a very thin bread, we, which you can find it here in in some of the Middle East. You Eastern see, Mr. Khalid, yeah. what the old country have, we have uh, 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 treasures, treasures. Absolutely. And we should record it in our books for our new yeah. generation. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Khalil, uh, my question, Habib, over here, yesterday, uh, 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 Layla uh, Al-Husseini, yes. uh, she invited uh, a gentleman in charge of al banug al-Islamiyya in Dubai, yes. and London is the headquarter. And I was trying to address a question, Mr. Khalil Hashim, yeah. but her time was very limited. What's the question? The question was, I was trying to ask Mr. Basim Nadim Nadeem, from yeah, Dubai. Yeah, yeah. I want to say to him, Mr. Uh, Nadim Basim, Banug uh, al-Islamiyya, Qatta' Ahli, yani private, but it, it is supported by uh, so many uh, rich uh, uh, countries, uh, 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 Arabic countries and Islamic. My question was, Mr. Khalil, Uh, could uh, you, Mr. Basim Nadim, uh, uh, do uh, uh, some kind of suggestion uh, uh, from these uh, countries to put a special money donation, sanduk khas, a box, to give help for our refugees in Iraq, in Syria, uh, from what they are facing uh, 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 in the tent, uh, sleeping in this cold weather, Saluj, uh, buried. Sunduq uh, Khas, razor fund from those rich Arabic Islamic countries to go private to private to help, uh, the aim to help Nazihin in Syria, in Iraq, in Egypt, in Libya, in any countries in our Middle East. And I, I, think, I think that's a very good idea, and then we'll, we'll definitely uh, you know, make the suggestions to him. I, th- I don't think Mr. Nadim is in a position to make suggestions to these guys, but uh, it's, it's good to start the conversation and talk about it because... You know, these refugees, specifically Syrian refugees, oh. you know, what's going on in Syria is really heartbreaking. It's I was talking to my family the other day, them. and, you know, there's quite a bit of uh, refugees in, in southern Lebanon and Lebanon in general and, uh, in, 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 you know, where my family live and all of that. And, and, you know, although, you know, the local population is trying to help, but a lot more help is needed. You know what's really needed, number one, yes, is yes. how can we stop the war? How can we stop the bleeding? How can we stop more people from becoming refugees? This is where we need to really concentrate on. You know, wouldn't it be wonderful if, you know, instead of trying to put coalitions to, you know, attack here and do there, and maybe it's, it's warranted, what really needs to be done is how can we stop the war? How can Mr. we stop Khalid the Hashim, fighting? This is what I addressed the last Absolutely. Time. You know, uh, uh, we need uh, to stop the bleeding. Mr. These, m- You know, exactly, the, Mr. Khair Hashim, Muhammad al Zahar, Mr. Muhammad al Zahar, a couple of days ago, or last week, he, he invited some Iraqi officials. Yes, uh, yes, I listened and, to and that. I yes. this question to him. I said, uh, yesterday, Mr. Muhammad al Zahar, I want to ask uh, your guest. Yesterday, we were criticized uh, 
England and, 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 and France uh, for being uh, invaders. And now we are the same people asking help from them. Where is Jamiat al-Dawla al-Arabiya, the, the Arab League? They're is sleeping. it just a building they're on the Nile yeah, River? sleeping. Sleeping, yeah, yes. they're sleeping. I mean, Where shame on them to call them them. Jamiat al-Dawla al-Arabiya, Arab League, with no action, just dinners and lunches and, and, and ambassadors and given all those hot speech and, and for, for, for nothing. Why we should uh, ask the West to help us, uh, Mr. Yeah. Khalil Hashim? I, I, want to ask you, I want to ask you a different question, Jerry. Yes, sir. Yes. You're, you're, you're from Iraq originally, is that correct? Yes, sir. And, 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 and I'm proud to be an American and absolutely. Iraqi origin. Absolutely. I want to ask you, you know, in the Chaldean community, what are some of the great dishes uh, like you, you ask me, I was born in Lebanon, and I tell you kibbe and tabbouleh and all of that. Yes. In your community, what are some of the dishes that, you know, when you say them, it reminds you of your community? <laughs> Absolutely. There is uh, two, uh, two major food, uh, Mr. Khalil Hashim. Yes. One of them they call it pacha. H- and how one do you say that? One of them they call it tashri, pacha. Pacha, okay. Pacha, it's uh, from, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the lamb. Yeah. Uh, like uh, haruf, yeah. uh, sheep, yeah. and they take that uh, the uh, what they call the tribe, the uh, stomach. Yes, yes, and, yes, and, yes, yes, yes. And yes. they and those uh, things uh, they uh, stuff it with uh, rice. Yes, and yes. Or oh, they call it but uh, manavir, manavir. Yeah. And, and what's the and, other dish? And the other one uh, uh, they call it. Uh, Yes, kebab Oh my God! I know. Are they fried or are they baked? Uh, uh, bo- bo- boiled in a big pot. Oh, I never had them boiled. Oh my God! And, and, and kebab mahshiya, how, how is that made? And kebab mahshiya, uh, rice mm-hmm. and raisin and mm-hmm. almonds and all our uh, delicious uh, uh, grounded uh, uh, spices, you know, like yeah, 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 yeah. baharat. Seven, seven spices, yeah. Y- y- you know, you know what they call them? They call them Ras al Hanout. Oh, Ras al Hanout. Yeah. You know where did I eat this similar to Iraq in, in D- D- Dimashq? بساحة المرجه سرت المرجه يا او ادو كراعين كراعين اه مين ذيس ذيس ذا جود ستاف يو ارموس اند ذي ميلتد ان يور ماوث يا يا ذا اذر وان مستر خالد هاشم ذا سكند تاب ثينكس ان ان العراق ووز تشريب تشريب مين ذا شانك لام شانك لام شانكس يا اند يو بوت ات وذ ذا فريش tomato juice yeah. and you bring this khubz bread and you you cut it to pieces and you don't have to use uh, uh, forks or uh, a spoon you just pick you up the just, bone right yes yeah. you just fold your shirt i know i know i know and you know. wash your hands yeah. and you eat abul khamsa abul khamsa mean with your five fingers oh. <laughs> and you'll say yummy and delicious you know the trick to that is is not to uh, let your fingers touch your mouth, in which you pick up the food with your fingers and toss it in your mouth. And this way, uh, I had uh, dinner with uh, some Indian uh, friends in Florida, and they yeah. were showing me how to pick up the rice, make it into a little bowl, and then toss it in your mouth. And they said, you know, the trick is not to let your fingers touch your mouth. And if that happens, you wash your hands. There's a magic thought, touch. Yeah. Well, yeah. Just like the Chinese, how they eat the rice yeah. with the chopstick. We have in our culture, you, you reach the food with the five fingers in, in a magic way, in a, in a polite way. And I believe the Bedouin, the Bedouin in, 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 in our suburb, in, they are the ones who they use that magic of five a finger touch without you actually touching the food. It's just a magic. I mean, look at the beautiful culture, and that's what makes America, Mr. Khalil Hashim, a yeah. great country. It's a melted pot from uh, 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 Arab, uh, Syrian, uh, Chinese, wonderful, Asian, wonderful. European, yeah. and Mr. Khalil well, Hashim was nice yeah, to talk nice to you. Nice talking to you, too. Thank you so much, and happy Friday. Mrs. Layla al Hussein. Thank you. Happy Friday. And God bless you and bless America and our country. Thank you. Bye now. Uh, please stay tuned. We're going to be taking a short break. We'll be right back. Are you going to start up a restaurant or a grocery store soon? Do you need floor plans and designs? Call Najee Aboud at 248-442-9292. Do you want to buy kitchen and restaurant equipment at discount prices? Call Najee Aboud now, 248 248- 
442-9292. New concept products and designs. The trademark of kitchen equipment. 5% discount on all purchases of 75000 or more. For more information, visit newconceptproducts.com. 248-442-9292. It's never too early to get your child on the right track. From their first words to first grade, Dreamy Children's Center in Troy works closely with parents to provide an experience that goes beyond early education. The highly qualified and experienced staff use a variety of programs that can help nurture important personality traits like responsibility, independence, problem solving, motivation, and respect. They also have educational programs ranging from preschooling for infants, toddlers, transitional toddlers, and pre-K to Montessori-approved programs and bilingual curriculums for young children. They're open from 6 a.m. to 6.30 p.m., can provide breakfast, lunch, and dinner with snacks in between, and can also arrange for after-school pickups. Dreamy Children's Center in Troy is located at 37373 Dequinder, just above 16 Mile Road, and can be found on Facebook at Dreamy Children's Center. Ask about the free preschool program. Call today, 248 680 9170-248-680-9170. Welcome back and thank you for listening to Radio Bella. The, the number here is 248-557-3300. And uh, we want to welcome you and, and thank you for listening. Um, Rama is with us. Is that, uh, Hello, Rama. Good morning, Rama. Good morning. Good, hello. Hello, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Okay, I'm going to pronounce your name. This is Ramal Husseini. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. Yep, you got it. And now, um, tell us a little bit about you, Rama, please. Um, so, my family and I um, have three early childhood centers in southeast Michigan. Mm -hmm. um, we have a location in Dearborn Heights. We have a location in Troy. Um, and we just got our newest location in Westland. Wonderful. Um, when did you start that? So, we started our um, daycare business in 2001 and it kind of evolved and grew and we got our first center in 2011 what what makes so. a dreamy school the wonderful school we hear about uh, tell, tell us a bit more about it i think what really makes us different is the family touch because mm -hmm. it's a family mm -hmm. taking care of families it's a lot more personalized and genuine so there's a lot of you know franchises there's a lot of daycare centers that are just run by people who aren't, you know, involved like we are. Yes, yes. yes. Now, you, you're a senior at the University of Michigan. What are you studying there? Yeah. I'm studying children and families. What's, what, what, what is that? So, basically, it's for child care administration. It's okay. for early okay. childhood education. Wonderful. So, it's kind of a mix of both. Wonderful. What is it about children you guys like? It seems like your family really love children and you wanted to provide the service to the community. You know, I think when my mom first started the business, she just wanted to um, be close to us and kind of be able to work mm -hmm. while we mm -hmm. were still with her. Um, so when we were young kids and she just didn't want to be away from us. So that's kind of why she chose that field. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the new, um, if you don't mind, about the new uh, facility. Uh, you know, where it is and, and when is that going to open, if it's already opened, and, and what does it offer? Uh, it is not open yet. It's on okay. Ann Arbor Trail, okay. um, in between Merriman and, and Middle Belt in Westland. In Westland. Okay. When mm -hmm. is it going to open? Yep. Um, our grand opening should be in September. Okay. Um, right now, we are working on getting the center ready. Mm -hmm. It is not. Um, it was running as one of the franchises, one of the, um, I believe it was Child Time. Okay. Um, so it is not running right now. We are working on getting it, you know, up to our standards and the way we usually have our centers set up. So it used to be uh, a child care facility, yep. and now yep. you wanted to update. And when you say up to your standard, what mm -hmm. does that mean? What, what is it you do for you know to, to make it up to your standard? So um, just the materials, the equipment, um, the layout of the classroom, um, just okay. to make sure that we can accommodate for all children, um, birth to age five. Okay. So um, that does include children with special needs as well. Wonderful. And if people want to get in touch with you, what's, is, is there a, a web address? Is there a phone number? Yes. yes. Um, we do have a website, dreamychildrencenter.com. Okay. So um, dreamychildrencenter.com. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, that is, doesn't include um, the other two locations right now. It's still kind of being updated. Okay. Um, but the f best phone number is 313 359 
3599999. That's easy. 3599999. Yeah. And originally you're from Syria, is that right? Yes. Okay. Yes. What's your favorite dish? We were um, talking about food earlier. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say it's definitely um, kusa. Kusa. And, and yep. how do you make that? Well, the way my mom makes it usually is with um, some laban and rice. Mm -hmm. So that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's my favorite dish. Yeah. <laughs> you know what they call that, right? It has a different no. name. The kusa of no. laban is called ablama. Oh, that's how we call it. Yeah. What, what do you stuff them <laughs> with? What does she stuff them with? Um, and I think it's just uh, meat. Yes, yeah, so meat and pine nuts, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. My grandmother used to make that, and she she used to she used to make me go back to the go out to the garden and pick uh -huh. the smallest ones, and then uh, yeah. and they have to be very small. Yeah, you small. can't use the bigger ones. No, you have to be very small, <laughs> and then she used to she taught me how to you know uh, an oron you know take the inside out you know to core them out, and then she mm -hmm. used to stuff them. You know what she used to do, and I learned that from her, and I think your mom does the same thing. You know, uh, one thing I want to say is, our, our moms are wonderful. You know, they just do yeah. all these things out of the goodness of their hearts. Yeah, uh, yeah. She used to do them overnight, and then she used to sprinkle some salt inside the kusa, and mm. that used to tame the uh, the taste of the raw kusa. The next mm -hmm. day, she'll wash him, and then stuff him, and then make him with leban. And the leban she used to use was uh, goat leban. The difference is that goat leban cooks very well so uh, really? and, and I still remember that taste so how often does your mom make that um, every once in a while I think yeah you know? well you need to talk to her you need to ask her I request it yeah make it more and uh, br bring us some uh, you know a couple dishes to the, uh, to yeah. the studio here yes of I'm, course I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at uh, uh, our staff here, and they're looking at me like in a kusa. You just made them hungry. <laughs> Make them hungry, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, wonderful. Well, uh, t before we, uh, you know, I just want to learn more about, uh, yeah, you know, the Dreamy, what, what else can you tell us about the, the center? Well, right now, I think the most important thing that we're doing in the center is the Great Start Readiness Program. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So that is a government-funded program for mm -hmm. four-year-olds. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to say they have to be at risk, but they just have to qualify. And um, qualification so here is that low income? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we are running that right now in Troy, and we are running that in Dearborn Heights, and um, hopefully we'll have that running in Westland in September. Okay. Um, so this program is completely free of cost for, for all four-year-olds that qualify. Okay. Um, and it gets them ready for kindergarten. Oh, so okay. We well, have it's like a preschool kind of thing? Yeah, it's, it's okay. just for four-year-olds. Okay. Um, so we get those... Um, kindergarten standards that they're going to be um, they're going to be held to when they go to kindergarten in a public school, and okay. we kind of look at how we can get the children ready to meet those standards next year. Is that like a Montessori kind of program, or, or not um, Montessori? It, it is similar to Montessori in the way that the child becomes more independent, more self-sufficient. Yes, yes. Um, right. But our our centers do have a Montessori program as well. Sure. And is that a whole a full day program or half a day? It is. It's a full day program. We mm -hmm. run Monday through Thursday, mm -hmm. and then Fridays is teacher planning days and parent teacher conference days and home visit days. So that's also something different about the program. Is what the home visit? Teacher, the teacher will actually come um, and visit the child in their house in their and environment. take a look at them yeah, in that yeah, environment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, my daughter is four and really? just turned four. And oh, she's awesome. going half a day right now, you know, as mm -hmm. a, I think it's a preschool. And, you know, the beginning was tough, but, uh, but you yeah. know, once, once you find a place you trust, and when, when you start talking about uh, Dream a School, it sounds to me this is a place that, you know, it's a, it's a trustworthy place. Thanks. Because, I mean, our children are the most precious, uh, right. uh, you know, <laughs> thing exactly. we, we, we have. Exactly, you're trusting us with the most so important thing We want to trust them. We want to we take them to a place where... It is really we trust and place taking care of them, and this is you know when you talk about dreamy school, it sounds to me like you know it is such a place. We want to thank, thank you for being with us, and and you know uh, and thank your family for really thinking of starting this great program in the community here. And so uh, give us the number one more time and the website. It's three one three three five nine 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 three five nine 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 nine. And yeah. the website is a dreamy school. DreamyChildrenCenter.com. DreamyChildrenCenter.com. Yep. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Rama. And, thank you and for next having time me. you next time you eat kusav laban, think of us. 
I will. <laughs> okay. And say hello to your mom. I will. Thank you, guys. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye now. What we're going to do is we're going to take a short uh, commercial break, and we're going to be right back. Please stay tuned. Ziad Brand. Quality products from our family to yours. Ziad Brothers Importing offers the finest quality products, including brands like Sultan, Kraft, Nestle, Hook, Rico Picon, Donna, and many more. Ask your retailer to carry these fine products because you deserve the very best. For more information, visit our website at www.ziad.com. That's www.ziad.com. Ziad, quality products from our family to yours. Life for Relief and Development is a nonprofit charity that has been providing humanitarian aid and development to people and communities regardless of race, color, religion, or cultural background for over 22 years. When disaster occurs here or around the world, Life rushes to provide food, medical aid, and shelter to those in need. Life also has development projects that provide medical relief, water purification, educational programs, relief for orphans, and much more. Your help and support can greatly improve these efforts. All donations are tax deductible. For more information, please visit our website at lifeusa.org or call 248-424-7493. That's lifeusa.org, 248-424-7493. Welcome back to Radio Ballady. Um, in this part of the program, uh, we're waiting for Dr. Sawan to join us. Uh, she's going to be talking about uh, whiplash. And, uh, you know, this is one of the um, injuries that happen during uh, car crashes or caused by car crashes. It could also happen for, you know, uh, be caused by other uh, causes as well. And um, what it is is that the strain or the, the the deterioration of the muscles in the in the neck. And then we'll be talking to Dr. Swan about that. And uh, here in the studio, they were asking me my knowledge about food, and and I used to write about food. And and uh, you know, earlier we were talking about the various dishes. And uh, Rama mentioned the uh, kusa kusa blaban, and and kusa blaban is in English basically it's the small the small zucchini stuffed with pine nuts and meat. And they're cooked with yogurt, and uh, it's really delicious. And 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 uh, um, I've made it here, and it's really good. And and I recall my grandmother used to make it as well. Um, the the uh, you know food is a, is a wonderful uh, topic uh, to discuss and talk about, and it touches everyone. And all of us have uh, a favorite dish. Uh, Mediterranean and Middle Eastern food normally. Uh, attracts crowd because they're delicious, they're spicy, and uh, they're um, uh, crowd pleaser. I, I remember when I was in Florida, there weren't that many Middle Easterns there, and I used to make uh, you know a variety of different dishes, specifically mjadara or um, you know falafel. I used to make them at home. And I used to invite my friends, and then once people smell the 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 aroma of spices, and and they used to come in and have falafel sandwiches, and and you know as you well know, mjadara is the lentils and rice and and sautéed onions, caramelized onions, and and uh, they're filling. The, the reason these dishes were developed, if I may tell you, is that in the old days, uh, meat, poultry, and fish were luxuries in the Middle East because you know most people were peasants. So they devised these great dishes to sustain them in the field. And eventually they became really good dishes. Now what I do is I take some of these dishes and introduce meat and poultry and fish to them and combine them together. But I also try to maintain the old, pleasant, and, and, and historic taste to that. So they're, they're, they're really great. For example, I take them jadara and add to it salmon and I do it... Uh, uh, shrimp and add to it, uh, you know, different, uh, different, uh, different flavors, and uh, it, it they taste really good. I think Dr. Swan has joined us, and I just want to say good morning and welcome uh, to the show. Good morning, Dr. Swan. Yeah, good morning. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you. We wanted to be ready for you, so uh, you know, and I want to say good morning and welcome, and and the talented uh, Dr. Swan. Um, I haven't heard you play the piano recently. How's the piano playing? 
<laughs> it's a little bit on hold. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just want to say Dr. Swan is one of Chicago's premier specialists with more than 32 years in medical practice. She is a board certified in neurology, pain medicine, uh, neuromuscular and electrodiagnostic medicine. And uh, if you joined us, uh, uh, tuned in earlier, we were talking about food. And what's your favorite dish? I should ask you that first. Oh, I am, you know, like uh, too much into vegetables, so uh, I like tabbouleh. Tabbouleh. Yeah. Tabbouleh is great. It's. Uh, do you make your own? Oh, I do. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. What do you put in your tabbouleh? Parsley, lots of parsley. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Green onions and tomatoes and yeah, it, yeah, lemon it, juice and olive oil and wonderful. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And today we're going to be talking about whiplash injuries. And uh, if you want to start us with uh, defining what is that injury and how it happens and diagnosti- diagnosis, and, and, and we're going to be talking about pain management as well. Yeah. So uh, whiplash, um, we call it next, uh, next strain or whiplash. Um, it is usually associated with car accidents. Mm-hmm. But any impact or blow that causes the head to jerk forward or backward can cause neck strain or whiplash as well. So basically, whiplash, I would say it is a collection of symptoms that occur following soft tissue injury. And the soft tissue that I'm talking about, I'm talking about muscles, tendons, and ligaments. In the and, neck area? Yes, okay. in the neck area. And mm-hmm. it is relatively common injury, and uh, it's occurring when uh, this type of movement uh, is happening in un- uh, unrestrained head. So that's why um, it is important to use the head restraints behind the head and not below the head. And most cars right now, they do have those head restraints. And yeah, we're talking about the, the, the small restraint that is on top of the seat behind exactly. yeah and 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 do you recommend that people when they buy a car to adjust that so it'll be right behind their head not exactly lower. behind okay. the head if okay. it is below or lower than the head mm-hmm. it will make the whiplash worse mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. now fortunately whiplash is typically not a life-threatening injury but it can lead to prolonged period of partial disability yes and there are significant economic expenses related mm-hmm. to whiplash mm-hmm. that can reach 30 billion dollars a year yeah. in the united states and this is uh, related to medical care, disability, sick leave, lost productivity, and litigation. So, you know, it's really, you know, like it's a huge problem. And there is wide variation of symptoms. While most people involved in uh, motor vehicle accidents recover quickly without any chronic symptoms, some would continue to experience symptoms for years after the injury. Now, um, I want to. You know, I've always wondered about something, and you may be able to help us with it. When I'm sitting in my car, and some people take their seat, push their seat back a little bit, mm-hmm. and I'm just talking about the, the 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 back portion, not the whole seat. And some people, like in my case, I like this seat to be almost 90 degrees, uh, you know, supporting my back and my my head. Is there a recommendation? What's the pes- the best position of the you know the yeah, back of the seat? Yeah, I would say you know whatever position that will make you more comfortable. But really, the most important thing is to use is to use the head restraint, okay. and this is something that should be exactly behind the head mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because you know the problem you know with whiplash injury it happens with hyperextension and hyperflexion. So if we are preventing the hyperextension, okay. this will help a lot. And, you know, really it is important, you know, to do that because the symptoms of whiplash could be, you know, like so severe and they could be minor as well. But, you know, we have to try to prevent it, you know. I, and I would say that the most important part of, uh, you know, like taking care of whiplash really is prevention. And I do agree that you are asking me about, you know, if the seat should be like, you know, upright or a little bit inclined or something. Really, it doesn't matter as long as the head, um, you know, is supported. And also, we should be using, uh, of course, you know, the seat belt. And most important thing, you know, I would say to avoid the driving under alcohol or drug influence and Mm -hmm. also, Mm -hmm. you know, to avoid the driving while people is not, you know, while a person is not sleeping well, you know, the Mm -hmm. day before. 
and most importantly, avoiding using cell phones while driving. So I think that all you know, those are all yeah. measures, yeah. 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 you know, all to prevent. Yeah. yeah, yeah, to prevent this problem. Mm-hmm. And um, is this is this why I see some people wearing this big collar around their necks after accidents? Yeah, it is. You know, that was actually the old way of treating it. Now, the symptoms of whiplash, usually there will be like, you know, neck pain, stiffness, headache, you know, shoulder pain, dizziness, fatigue, arm pain, arm weakness. So basically what's happening, most importantly, there will be neck pain. And in the old school, uh, they were thinking that if we just, if we just like you know put this uh, neck collar and you know stop the neck from movement that this will help. As a matter of fact, you know the new trend in treatment is not just using the neck collar. I mean, you know we have to start you know like um, uh, doing some physical therapy and uh, do, uh, and doing some range of motion exercises after we are sure that there is no neck injury. So. What would happen after, um, you know, like a whiplash injury? The patient will be taken, you know, to a physician or to the emergency room. Mm-hmm, Most important mm-hmm. thing, they will immobilize the neck because we have to get x-rays mm-hmm. while the neck is totally, totally, totally immobilized because mm-hmm. this is the problem. If there was like, you know, severe neck injury or fracture, you know, we really do not want to... Um, cause more damage exactly. and, you know, like uh, uh, compression of the spinal cord. And that's why we do immediate immobilization. After we take the x-ray, if everything is fine and, you know, if the patient is not having lots of pain, maybe we do not need to use the collar. But if the patient is having, you know, pain with range of motion, we may use, you know, a cervical collar for a short period of time, and then we should combine this also with physical therapy and range of motion exercises. If it's not treated properly, whiplash can cause, I'm assuming, you know, long-term complications. Is that correct? Yes. This and, is and what are they? Uh, yeah. I think that the most important part of treatment, we have to educate the patient. And uh, the patient education should include the most important fact that uh, patients should understand that nearly all patients uh, have the ability to fully recover. This is extremely important because if we do not explain this to the patients, patients um, may actually get into something called the chronic whiplash um, associated disorder, which is, you know, where they will be having a prolonged pain and, you know, like a decreased range of motion, and they may have, like, you know, continued headaches and dizziness and fatigue. And, you know, I just want you to know that whiplash injury is one of the compensable injuries, especially with car accidents, and sometimes there will be secondary gain issues involved. But I do not uh, mean that, you know, whiplash is not a real injury. It is a real injury, but most patients would recover, you know, very easily, like over time, and, you know, it may happen, like, you know, over like a month or so. But, you know, some of them would actually continue to have prolonged, you know, pain and, you know, chronic pain, and they will get into, you know, like so many medications and, you know, um, you know, disability and um, even like, you know, missed days of work. And, yeah, so... It's, um, um, you know... What what are causes of whiplash other than car injuries? <laughs> I would say the rides in the park. <laughs> <laughs> and some athletes also, you know, like you yeah. know, while they are playing or moving and also the shaken baby syndrome. I mean, any any uh, activity that will lead, you know, to hyperextension or hyperflexion or, you know, like... Uh, uh, I would say, you know, uh, you know, I, I really think that the most common cause, of course, would be motor vehicle accidents. Sure, sure. Because again, if that sudden a jerking of the neck upward and backward, and and the tearing of tissues, and actually, it is backward and forward. So backward to forward, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it, you know, and. Uh, uh, as you said, you know, being in the park and doing other activities, and so. When should I feel like, you know, I really need to see a doctor? I, I immediately. Move, you know, I move immediately. Okay. As a matter of fact, this okay. is very important because okay. 
there could be, you know, like more serious injury. Mm-hmm. And remember that, you know, the neck area, um, it, you know, it's it's a very small area, and there is the spinal cord. Mm-hmm. If there is anything that is pushing on the spinal cord, we may end up, you know, with spinal cord compression. Yes. So we have. This is the most important thing. Immediately, immediately, the patient should be immo- The neck should be immobilized, mm-hmm. and we mm-hmm. should get X-rays immediately. Mm-hmm. And if the X-ray is fine, we can actually, um, you know, like. Um, and make sure that, you know, at least, at least there isn't an acute injury that needs to be taken care of immediately. Now, if the patient continues to have pain, we usually get, like, you know, dynamic x-rays, like, you know, x-rays with extension and flexion views to make sure that there isn't, you know, like anything else going on. Or we may get, you know, like MRIs because the MRI of the cervical spine will help us to see if there is, for example, something like herniated disc that is pushing on a nerve and causing, you know, pinched nerve on top is of that, that. Is that what you call compression? Or compression is something else? Um, as a matter of fact, uh, I would say that there is compression on the, ner- uh, on the nerve. When okay. there is herniated disc, the nerve will be compressed okay. and or it will be pinched. And, you know... We will have variety of symptoms, including, you know, like tingling, numbness, weakness, uh, shooting pain, going down, uh, you know, the arm, and, um, you know, most importantly, you know, uh, if the if the nerve is pinched, it depends how bad is this pinching, or you know, it depends on the severity of pinching, and then this will cause, you know, um, you know, like all types of symptoms. So. We have to make sure, you know, to do the MRI to check, you know, on the herniated disc and also to do the nerve conduction study and electromyography. And this will help us to see if, uh, the, you know, if there, uh, if there are any affected nerves and if the muscles are affected and we will be able to find out also the level of the radiculopathy or, you know, where, the, where the, oh, those nerves are pinched. It, it, what's the best way... You know, other than car crashes, which is really we don't predict, what's the best way to protect our neck area? And, um, you know, because a lot of people complain from strain. Strengthening of muscles. Yeah. Strengthening of muscles. This yeah. is and how do you do that? important. You know, like it's, uh, there are like specific exercises that we can do. Mm-hmm. And, you know, also, you know, we should not be putting, you know, like strain uh, on the neck um, or, you know, like lots of pressure on the neck with a prolonged um, Sitting, I mean, you know, like uh, prolonged. Like I sit, I sit in front of the computer a lot, and after oh, a while, yeah. I feel that strain in my, specifically on my right side. You know, I just feel that strain in there, and I feel those muscles are really tightened, and yes, and, and you know, and and uh, it's and you, you don't really pay attention. You know, it's like after a while, it starts hurting. Uh, so the best way to do that is strengthening? Yes, and, yeah. and you know, to take breaks. I yeah. mean, you know, yeah. don't sit like in front of the computer for like, you know, three, four hours without, you know, taking breaks, stretching, um, you what, know. What's the recommended? Is it like 20 minutes? <laughs> it depends, you know, how yeah. often you can yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I would say like, you know, every hour, every 30 minutes, you know, if you can. You know, not everybody would have the luxury to do that. Yes, yes. We got one minute left, Dr. Suwan. You want to, you know, uh, sum up, uh, you know, what what we're talking about and a recommendation? Yeah, I would say that the most important thing to try to prevent car accidents, really, because it is the most common cause of whiplash injury. And I think that the most important thing that I would like to talk about is to avoid texting, Facebooking, And, um, you know, doing, you know, activities other than driving while you are driving, you know. I think that this is important, you know, you know, to stop using cell phones or texting or Facebooking while driving. And I have seen lots of people doing that. And also, you know, I I think that, you know, we have to choose, you know, like uh, a car that has, you know, like the good, um, you know, like headrests and also, you know, like airbags and, you know, there is also, you know, like uh, um, something called, you know, um, uh, bag curtains and, you know, like anything 
in the car that would Thank help safety. But, absolutely. you know, the most important thing is to use the car properly yep. for what it is supposed to be used for, which is driving. Sounds not, good. you know, like using cell phones and yep. also, you know, not to drive under the effect of alcohol or drugs or sleep deprivation. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for being with us. Have a wonderful weekend, and we'll talk next month on, 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 an, on another important issue as well. Thank you, Dr. Suman.